Um, so, thank you to everyone for joining us for another Wushu live stream. And tonight, or today, depending on where you are in the world, I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite Wushu videos of all time. Um, I'm very excited to share these videos, and I hope that uh, you're interested in, in seeing these videos. Um, needless to say, a lot of these videos are from my own personal collection, things that uh, were part of my life, things that I owned on, on maybe VHS tapes, some of the things that I recorded myself, but I will also be sharing some other things. So tonight, I'm going to try to keep this about an hour long, which means that we won't be able to watch all of the videos in its entirety, but I will be sharing um, links. I'll be telling you what these videos are. So if you'd like to watch those videos at a later time in its entirety, um, you can do so. So um, let's see here. All right. Oh, wow. Some people are already in the chat. Gabby Jade is there. Rebecca Chin, Alan Pang. Nice to see you guys. Chris, 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 if you need a new Jio shirt, I'll hook you up, man. Um, it might take me a while because I need to get back to the mainland before I send it to you, but I'll help you out. So, does anybody have any, any before we get started, does anybody have any guesses for what videos I'm going to share? I'm sure some of you might have an idea of, of what these videos are, but I, you know, just to start some casual chat before we get into the videos, uh, what do you think we're going to be watching today? We're we going to be watching old school, new school. We're we going to be watching competitions. We're we going to be watching compilations. Um, uh, again, it's a Sunday evening, and I do have a glass of red wine. Alan Peng says Zhao Changjun. That's a good guess. That's a good guess. I mean, Zhao Changjun is one of the greatest wushu athletes of all time. That's a good guess. That's a good guess. Alan Peng says old school long fist. I mean, that's for sure. That's like a given. We're definitely going to be some old school long fist. Uh, oh yeah, man. Yeah, Chris, I will definitely see you in the South. Rebecca Chin says lots of Jen. There's going to be some Jen. There's going to be some good Jen uh, for sure. These are all good guesses. I like this. I like the people are, are, you know me, you know me a bit. Um, okay. So before we get started, I want to set things up. Um, this first video that we're going to show is a very important video for me. Um, I started Wushu when I was in college at the University of Oregon in 1994. My coach was uh, my friend Dan Wu. Some of you may know Daniel Wu as a uh, world famous actor now. Uh, back then, we were just friends. So Dan had been doing Wushu for several years. And during the summer, I think it was either the summer of 94 or the summer of 95, he traveled to Beijing to practice with the Beijing Wuxi team. He went with his coach and later, who would be my coach, uh, Zhang Hongmei and Philip Wong. And I remember when we came back for fall term at the University of Oregon, he was like, you guys got to come over and watch this VHS tape. I recorded this video of the Beijing Wushu team practicing, and he was, he was really excited to share it to us. Um, we're just going to get into this. But I want to let you know that I made a copy of this tape, and I watched it every day. It, I, I would say every day for several years. That's how addicted I was to this video. So without further ado, let's get into this. This is summer of 94 or 95. This is the Beijing Wushu team's practice at Shushahai, Beijing. Okay, I forgot to put on my earpiece so I can hear this audio with you. Alan Peng says, do I have a video of Daniel Wu doing Wushu? I do, but I don't share it because that's Dan and I, don't, I feel like that's his personal business. Um, but I do. Dan was good. Dan was a good athlete. Okay, so just already by watching this video, I want to let you know when I saw this, I did not think it was physically possible for humans to move this quickly and to move with that kind of precision. Um, it really, really blew my mind. So this is the Beijing Wush team. There are some very famous athletes in this group. Um, Wu Jing, if you know Wu Jing, he's a very famous actor now. He was in Wolf Warrior, uh, Tai Chi, 
uh, the TV show. Wu Jing is in the back. I think he's the one wearing short shorts. Tiffany is in the chat. What's up, Tiff? But yeah, when I saw this video, I realized, oh, this is what my basics are supposed to look like. And it completely like changed my outlook on uh, what Wushu should be. So what I would do is um, I made a copy of Dan's tape, of this tape, and I would watch it before I went to practice to like get me pumped up. This would be like my hype tape. I put this in my VCR and I'm like, okay, got to get ready for Wushu practice. This is it. But yeah, I love this tape. I just love that they're all in sync. Loud slaps. That posture. Like, I didn't realize, okay, you have to keep your posture as you're doing your basics. It's crazy. Alan Peng says, that's what you do now. Do, what, what's your hype video? Do you guys have hype videos? Like, what, what's, what video do you watch? to get excited about wushu practice. I'm curious. I, I mean, I I had my hype video. This was it. I, wa I, I was watching this video so much that I made another copy where I put music on top of it. I had this weird VHS VCR, which was kind of advanced for its time that you could overdub audio on the video without losing the video quality. So I put this like hip hop track with like all kinds of old school hip hop. And that was my hype video. Kevin Liu says, you can't hear the slaps. Do I need to turn it up? Can you, can you hear the audio of the video? Oh, maybe you can't. Oh, no. Hold on. Can you hear that now? If you can hear that now, then that means I can't hear it because my air... AirPods aren't. Can you guys hear the video now? Can you hear it? I'm seeing the metering. Like, there should be audio coming to you. Pilar says, you love this video. Saw it on YouTube. Cannot hear audio of the video. Oh, you can't hear it now. Okay, okay. So, I can't hear the audio, but you can. It's more important that you hear. Alan says, all the Shandong videos. Okay. Nice one. Nice one. Okay. So, let's see. That was Zhu Guijin. Uh, Nanchun competitor that just went by and did. I think that's Wu Jing in the back in the short shorts. I think. Uh, Zhuang Hui is in this group. Zhuang Hui is in the States now. Uh, used to teach Wushu. Um, I don't think she's still teaching. Um, who else is in here? Li Jing should have been at Shih Chihai at this time. I don't think she's doing basics in this group. I think she does forms later. Kevin Liu says his hype video is the black and white non non do video. Oh, what was that? What was the name of that? It had a name, like at the beginning. Um, what was that video called? You guys all know it's the black and white where it's just non do. It's just people jumping. Man, I love this video. Like I le I learned so much just by watching the video. I I learned just how to do the two step jump, not even with the kick. I watched them to see how they use their arms, how they use their, their left leg. God, these are sick jumps. Like, this was back in the day where jump kicks felt aggressive. Loud slaps. It was a real kick. You know, it wasn't just like you're tapping your hand. It was a real kick. Belong. Yes, Chris. Belong was the name of the video. Yes. I, I still don't know who created the Belong video. But it is a pretty, I don't know, would you call it a historic video? Like, it, it was something that got around in the community. So when you're watching these jumps, remember, this is a completely different era of Wushu, right? This is before the introduction of Nandu, before your jumps were scored according to very specific criteria. Basically, the judging back then was like, how much of a badass are you are, you know? Like, there was technical criteria, but it wasn't like, oh, you have to turn this many degrees. Um, your stance has to be at this angle. It was just basically like, are you good or not? Like, how, how badass are you? Tiff says, 
She watched that Belong video 10,000 times. I probably watched it at least a thousand times. Yes, Gabby Jade says, ho, so hi. Everybody nowadays is like, oh, because of Nandu, the Wushu athletes are better. But if you notice, like, any one of these athletes, if the rules had changed and it said, oh, you have to do a 720 or 540, plenty of these athletes would be able to do it. Plenty of these athletes would do it. Um, another thing to note is that this is like 94, 95. The rules for Wushu in China, they change in 96. In 96, China introduces their kind of proto Nandu, which is basically um, required movements. And they were very strange, very awkward. There was that front sweep to jump inside on the left leg, jump inside on the right. It was really, really weird. Um, I heard stories, I can't confirm this, but like the people that decided on what those movements were, some of them were not Wushu people. So there was an influence from like ice skating and gymnastics and things like that. Yes, tucking the left leg, Tiffany, that's right. That's right. It's tight tuck. You know, now when you're trying to rotate more than 360 degrees, it makes sense to have that left leg straight because it keeps your axis uh, more vertical. But back then, it was just about like, how fast can you kick? And by tucking that left knee, Yes, Chris, I believe I, I, I agree with you, man. Nandu ruined the jump outside, ruined the lotus kick. I learned so much about butterflies. So if you notice, um, it's more noticeable when people are doing multiple butterflies, but watch their right arm. Their right arm is actually doing another rotation. They go up on the left and then the right arm does a full another rotation. I'm gonna rewind that back so you can see that because I don't think a lot of Wushu people actually um, know about this technique. Basically, a lot of people take both arms and they just throw them up, right? That's the kind of a typical butterfly. But watch them. They throw their arm up and their left arm does another rotation underneath their body, which helps keep the momentum uh, and it helps keep the horizontal rotation. So watch the left arm. It's got an extra whip. So it's kind of like the left arm and the right arm help you get up in the air, but then with that extra rotation, it helps you get uh, more momentum and kind of like a secondary lift. It's so good. It's so good. I love that. Okay, so that's the first video that I wanted to share. Got to go into my folder over here. Um, what order are we going to go in? Um, this is so tough. All these videos are good. Okay. Okay, we're okay. We're going with this one. This one, all time, one of my all time favorite wushu videos. I believe this is also 1995. So this is before China introduces proto nandu. So this was the era where wushu athletes were just going for it, right? There was no hesitation. There was no pausing to get ready for a movement. It was just like go, 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 go. Minute and twenty of just sick sick wushu. So this is 1995 and this is women's competition. Uh, hopefully that audio is okay. But just watch the ferocity and the speed of these athletes. It's just incredible to me. Like, it just go, 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 go. Like, non-stop. Loud slaps, loud slaps. Pilar says you're you're drinking soju. I'm drinking red wine. Cheers to you, Pilar. Thanks for joining us. Whew. Wow. Even the even the wheeling arms. Wulon Panda, pow, hit the ground. Like, look how short her pauses are. Like, she's barely pausing, maybe for a second, maximum one second. 
Just a full 120 of aggressive wushu. Yeah, yeah, the techniques look like they're still martial. Like, like you could hurt somebody. Tiffany is saying the wheelie arms actually look like it could hurt somebody. Not, It's not like this, oh, pretty wushu. It's just like, no, we're out there. This is a very young Liu Qinghua with her little bowl boy cut before she becomes a champion. Yeah, Kristoff, Zhuang Hui, I'm sure, had some great wushu videos. Boom! Boom! Go, go, go! Oh, man, I love this wushu. Shit! That combo was sick! So fast, out of that front stretch kick. Oh, my God. So that move is actually a move that uh, she invented. The, the double jump front slap kick to turn 180 uh, and fall. Yeah. Liu Qinghua, one of the greatest wushu athletes of all time. So aggressive and also had such a personal expression. Her personal flavor came through in everything she did. Phenomenal, phenomenal wushu athlete. Yeah. Yes, Kristoff, the jump front to Lotus Kick is also one of my favorite combos. That was in my first like advanced long fist form. I always love that combination. God, incredible. Incredible. Sarah says, I love this. I love this too. This era of Wushu was so sick. So sick. We're gonna watch this entire video. I think it's only about 10 minutes, but it's just like whenever I see this, it just blows my mind. I'm like, yeah, that's, I want Wushu to be like this again. Or at least with this intensity, I should say. Pow! God, go, go, like, no, non-stop! It's like, where does one section end and where does the next section begin? It just keeps going. Oh. Some really cool combos, too. Boom! Jump inside fall in Changchun. Yes! Gabby Jade says, so powerful. Damn right it's powerful. Oh my god. Yeah, Alan Peng says, single section Talu. Really, this era was about that. Like, you measured a section just by, oh, did you go across the floor? There's no pausing here. And notice, like, all of these jumps and difficult moves... There's no setup. They just go right into it. They're just running and charging into it. I feel like what's lost in the current era of Nandu is that feeling like when I watch athletes like this, in my mind, I imagine horses charging into battle, you know? Warriors on horseback charging down a hill into battle. Ah, Guido Lenaro says it's not just more powerful, it's way more polished. Yeah. Boom! Quack! Oh my god! Hmm. This is uh, Zuo Zhuozhen. Zuozhen uh, would go on to be women's broadsword, and I believe staff champion at the 1997 All-China Games. I don't know if she was here, but she would be a member of the Beijing Wushu team. A lot of Chinese athletes would be traded between uh, provinces, between cities. Man. Like, loud hammer fists. Loud slaps. Like, uh, according to current wushu rules, they might be deducted because of the stances don't meet the current requirements. You might say that at, at times they're a little bit wild, or maybe their, their moves are... I don't want to use the word messy. But I think part of that is because they were not holding back. It was not about, uh, you know, being perfectly upright. It was about just like, go, go, go. 
show your ferocity and your intensity on the floor. Yeah, dude, this wushu is insane. It's insane. Oh, jumping side stretch kick. Jumping side stretch kick. Very rare. She killed that move. Oh, I love that. I love that. Yeah, Chris, they were telling a story with their movements. I agree. You, like, felt something when you watch these wushu forms. Like, not just you're in awe because of the spectacle and the intensity, but you felt like because of the tempo, you could see it in their eyes. Yeah, I do feel like they were telling a story. Ooh, interesting rotational change there. Cool combination. And also notice like how many different wushu techniques they're showing. It's not like front slap kick, wheeling arm, hammer fist. Front slap kick, body turn, hit the ground, hammer fist. Front slap, it's, it's not repetitive. They're just showing the, the diversity of Changshan techniques. I love that. Dan Liu says he thinks a lot of the landing requirements in modern Nandu killed the flow. Yeah, absolutely. When you put that much emphasis on it in an individual movement and an individual landing, it does change the tempo. Li Jing. Li Jing, good friend, amazing coach, now has a school down in Southern California. Great feet, great flavor. Incredible. Boom. Non-stop. Go, 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 go. Yes. Li Jing, amazing athlete. Oh, that, that like little pause there, little drag. Flavor. Boom. Nice, just that slowing down, changing the tempo. So good, so good. <laughs> Pilar says, I have to reincarnate. I think we all wish we could reincarnate and then somehow go back in time and be reincarnated as a wushu athlete in China in the 90s. So sick. Oh, man. I love that. 1995. I think it's it's a golden year of wushu in China because once 96 comes around, and I'll, I'll share some videos later, not to spoil it, of after 96, and you just see how the changes in the rules changes the tempo, changes the whole flow. I, I definitely am influenced by this era of hammer fists where you do that hop. I love the hop. It's like you wind up and before your right foot comes down, your left foot uh, leaves the ground so that when you stomp, it's actually both feet. And I feel like you get more intensity, both feet hitting the ground with the, the fist hitting the, the palm. It's more powerful. Boom, yeah, that style. I love that, I love that. Go, 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 go. Oh. Flavor, feeling. I think this is the final athlete on this video. Yeah, Tiffany says she wishes we could go back to this. I kind of do too. I, I just feel like there's a magic to this era of wushu. And, you know, it's not to say that today's wushu athletes aren't talented. It's not to say that they aren't great athletes. It just means that um, it's a different feeling. It's a different feeling. Okay, what are we watching next? 
Dan Liu says, welcome to another episode of Brandon's B-score guidance. I could do a whole fucking, pardon my language, we could do a whole hour or more talking about how, how I feel about B-scores. Okay, so that video is done. Where are we going to go now? Ah, this is so hard. I mean, we're about halfway through it. We're at 927. Okay, okay. What are we going to do? What are we going to do, Brandon? Okay. How about this? This is this is pretty cool. Um, many of you have seen this, I'm sure. Um, but I want to give some love to uh, Nantren. You've you've seen this. This is the uh, Nantren Basics Training. So this was on a website called Fred in China. Uh, Fred was a French wushu athlete, French, French wushu enthusiast. And he had this website, um, which was pretty advanced at his time. It had a lot of flash animation, and he had these videos. This video now is hosted on YouTube by Samuel Montalvo. Many of you know him. Um, what I really like about this video is it's, it was one of the very few videos back then, and even now, where you see athletes specifically training non-trend basics. And it was relevant then, and I think it's relevant now. I think a lot of Nanshan athletes don't practice Nanshan basics, and they really should. They they do their Changshan basics, and then they do a form. And I think just like in Changshan, right? Like how many stretch kicks did you have to do before you were good at stretch kicks? How many uh, back sweeps, bow stance, punch did you have to do before your Changshan was good? I think what I like about this video is it shows these athletes are putting in the time in Nanshan basics, Nanshan Jibingong, and it will show in their Taolu. Too many Nanshan athletes think of Nanshan as Taolu. Oh, Nanshan is my form. Yeah, this is my Taolu. This is a great um, example of Nanshan basics. Nanshan basics. Goo, what's up? Good to see you, man. Oh, this is nice. This is uh, some old school wushu friends in here. Goo says I should do a Cribs Barbados edition. I don't know, man. My rental feels like I'm in a weird 1970s tiki uh, beach exotic uh, fantasy world. Yeah. Jamal, what's up, man? Good to see you in here, Jamal. New York City Wushu representing. Yeah, I, I, I just love seeing this. Like, imagine, imagine if the development of Wushu had not been northern based, right? Imagine, let's say, the capital of China had been in Guangzhou. If the capital of China had been in Guangzhou or Guangdong, when it came time to develop modern wushu, it would have been southern based. And if it had been southern based, this would have been the core of wushu. Instead, because when wushu was developed, the capital was in Beijing, uh, it favored northern styles. And, you know, to be honest, for many years, southern styles were really neglected. But I love seeing this. I love seeing... Damn, that was high! Holy crap! Oh my god, man. Jump inside falls like they're going to touch the ceiling. So sick. So sick. Boom! He had that stall. He like jumped up and before he did the kick over, he kind of like did a fake stall and then went over. Incredible. Incredible. Guido says, it's debatable. I have a point. I'm just... I'm just I'm not saying it's truth. Whatever, whatever, whatever comes out of my mouth is just my opinion. You know, like you could disregard any any stuff that comes out of my mouth. Oh man, that was that was great. I love that. God, that video is only three minutes and fifty seconds. I wish it was longer. Um, what are we watching next? What are we watching next? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna switch things up. Um, we're going to switch it up. 
to some American wushu. So, uh, I'm from the United States of America. Uh, that's where I started training. That's where I fell in love with wushu. I, I feel like if you're, no matter where you're from, you should pay respect to the generation that came before you, not just in wushu, but in anything. Um, so this video is early wushu in the United States. This is from 1986. This is a wushu kung fu uh, exposition. Uh, I believe this is in Texas. I think that was Jeff Bolt. He was a host. So remember, in 1986, wushu internationally has barely been outside of China. Very, very early. So what I love about this video is this is maybe only a handful of years after Americans have been exposed to wushu. And let's watch this entire video. Is everyone great? No. But there are some athletes that are pretty damn good by any standard. By any standard. Oh, what's up, Sam? Good to see you, Sam. Nick Graysonen. Look at those basics. At the end of the line, that's Philip Wong. I trained with, with Sifu Philip Wong for many years. Look at the quality of the kicks. Look at the speed of the kicks. This is 86. This is like over 30 years ago. And my question to you is, is Wushu in America that much better? You can say, yeah, it's better overall, but is it really that much better? In 86, these athletes had very few resources. There was no YouTube, right? No, no, that's uh, Kenny Perez. Look at those side stretch kicks. That is super clean, super clean Wushu. You know, uh, traveling to China wasn't, wasn't easy, wasn't normal. Many of these athletes did go to China. Uh, Kenny Perez uh, trained in Beijing at Church High for many years, or not many years, but several times over many years. Like, these are good basics. These are good basics by any measure. By any measure. Christoph, you've never seen this video. Yeah, I, I think I only came across this video maybe like five years ago. Philip Wong, like, I trained with, with Philip Wong for many years, and I will tell you, there were days in practice where his wife, Zhang Homei, would be on the side coaching us, and Philip Wong would be in the back of the line behind us, and you would hear his slaps, like how loud they were and how fast they were, and without looking, you were like, I need to go faster, like, oh my God, like, I need to go faster, <laughs> coaches behind me. Um, was really inspirational and, and pushed you to do better. Look at Nick Grayson and his basics. Look at Kenny Perez's basics. Really good. It's good. You know, at, at, at the same time, when I watch these videos, it inspires me. It, it, it makes me, you know, respect the older generation. But at the same time, it's like, if these American athletes could be that good in 86, shouldn't we be much, much better? And you can say, oh yeah, you know, we can do non-do, we can do this and that, but on a, on a purely like raw level of basics, have we elevated Wushu? Kaiser. Chris says, Philip Wong may be the only person in the U.S. Wushu coaching more intimidating than Debbie Chen. I trained with both of them. I trained with both Philip Wong and Debbie Chen. And I'm going to give, uh, I'm going to give Philip Wong. Oh, it's so cool, man. Nick Grayson, Kenny Perez, and Philip Wong at the end. Super clean. Super clean. Also, realize, this is 1986. There was a Wushu Kung Fu exposition in this big hall with a audience that I'm guessing paid money. Why can't we do that now? How many events have we had in the United States that aren't a competition 
It's just a demonstration of wushu, not by Chinese athletes, but by domestically trained athletes. When, when have we had that? When have we had that? I, I, like never. Why can't we have an event like this with an American audience showcasing American athletes? Pilar says, really good to see Wushu from different parts of the globe. I mean, this was the United States in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, Tip, we can't have nice things. We're not going to. It's never going to happen. Jump front kicks. Good jump front kicks. Boom. Kaiser says, yeah, I'm making it sound like Wushu is more popular than 86. Okay, so real talk. Boom. Philip Wong. Real talk. You know, in the 80s, at the very first international Wushu competitions, which were hosted in China, you know that the United States meddled pretty regularly in those competitions. Somehow, for whatever reason, in those early years, on a global scale, the United States was actually fairly well developed. We had athletes that were really good comparatively, you know, and then the United States lost its way because of lack of, I'll say lack, damn, jump outside and split, holy shit, <laughs> wow, uh, because of lack of leadership, because of lack of resources, because of infighting between different groups in the United States, we fell behind. And then other countries, Russia, Ukraine, many Asian nations, they got their shit together. They got support. They got a federation that was united and united behind this goal of elevating their competitors. And the United States instead got caught up in a lot of infighting and we were unable to secure funding for athletes in development of Wushu. And it's a real damn shame. Yeah, Kristoff, the soundtrack. See, I can't hear the audio anymore, but it's like, this is pure 80s. There's like Gloria Estefan, right? Miami Sound Machine. Like, <laughs> this is 80s as fuck, man. Yeah, Jamal, knees at the chest, tucked tight. That left leg tucked tight as they jump. So good. So good. I mean, I'm showing this video because I want to be like inspirational to us, but it's also like, holy shit! Damn! <laughs> holy crap! That was like multiple aerials and then butterflies at the end. Look, I'm being honest here when I ask this question like are we that much better as American Wushu athletes did our generation and now I'm kind of old is the current generation are we really taking it to the next level I don't know man Philip Wong, that was his signature move in his drunken fist. He would do a running front flip, land on both feet standing up, and do a front fall. And do a front fall. Like, some of these athletes, I don't even know. That was sick, sick, sick butterfly. Nice. You know, athletic, flexible. Good technique. Like, like, what resources did they have? How did they learn wushu? They're they're practicing in parks. You know. Maybe they had a VHS tape. Maybe they did. Like, what American can do this? What American can do this? That. Man, I don't know. 
This is making me feel a lot of things. Like, are we not doing our best? Like, man. Okay, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm getting depressed here. I have to stop this video. <laughs> there's a, there's a little bit more. There's like two more minutes in the video. Um, after this gets posted to Facebook as just like a, a general, not a live video, I'll. I'll make sure to include video, uh, links to these videos. You can watch all these on YouTube. Um, man, okay, so where are we now? That was American Wushu. Ay, 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 man, what are we gonna do here? What are we gonna do? Okay, okay. We are gonna show this video. Okay, we're gonna do this. Okay, so part of that VHS tape that I played every day for several years. At the beginning, I had a video of Yuan Wenxing. And as I said, I dubbed music over it. And uh, many of you will know, I put uh, this song by Main Source off of the White Man Can't Jump soundtrack. It was called Fake in the Funk. So we're going to watch this video. I don't actually don't have that original video anymore. I've lost it but I have recreated it here um, with the full original footage of this. So this is Yuan Wenxing, you know, the Michael Jordan of Wushu. Uh, they call him the, the Prince of Wushu. His individual competition form was used as the base for the first international compulsory long fist. So I've added the music here. We're going back in time. Just watch this wushu. It is fucking incredible. Watch this jump outside. Watch this jump outside. Watch this. Whack! Like a fucking helicopter. Look at that scale. Look at that balance. God. Whew. Oh my god. I watched this video so many times. So many times. I think I actually, like, without anybody teaching me this form, I learned it just because I had watched it so many times. God. Ooh. Yeah. Creeping across the floor. Boom, boom, boom. What? Oh. Butterfly. Whew. W one of the greatest wushu videos of all time. Greatest wushu videos of all time. I love this video. God damn. Jerry. Jerry Silva, what's up, man? Thanks for joining us. Oh, it's, oh. I get I get goosebumps watching that video. Man, that brings back so many good memories. Okay, so we've watched that video now. What are we gonna watch? What are we gonna watch? Um okay. Let's do let's do this one. Um I know that. We were talking about 1995 and then 1996 being the year that changed Wushu. So this is from the All China Games, the 8th All China Games, which is in 1997. So before we watch this video, I, I want to talk a little bit about the development of Wushu. So this is the second year that China has had like proto Nandu, not Nandu as we understand it, but the Nandu was like, you had to do a specific combination of movements. And there were different combinations for the different forms. So Changshen had its own combinations. Daoshu had its own combinations. So you had that, and that changed the flow of Wushu. But in addition, starting this year, we had the introduction of uh, guiding weapons. So before uh, 96, everyone's weapon was that... Uh, spring steel with the chrome right 
not balanced. Uh, we all know those weapons. This first generation of grading weapons is very different from what we understand as grading weapons. The weight was similar, but the blades were not flexible. The blades have no sound. So what we're going to watch next is Liu Hayabo competing in broadsword. And listen, the broadsword makes no snapping sound. When you're watching this form, think about how that lack of sound changes how you interpret the form. Because it's a big difference. It's a big difference, not having that slap. All right. Liu Haibo, one of the greatest wushu athletes of all time. A small man, but who had a huge presence. Listen, there's no broadsword sound. What I loved about Liu Haibo is that he looked like he was going to fall off balance, but he never did. He's so wild. That extension, that, that body flavor, opening up his hips, opening up his arms. So ferocious. I mean, who the fuck can do this today? Nobody. Nobody can do this today. Only Liu Haibo could do this. Yeah, this sword is heavier. The, whole, the sword is stiffer, and he's still killing this form, murdering this form with a huge flag. Yes, Tiffany, huge flag. Look how big he's making this movements feel. How close the sword is to his body. Joe, Scarcella. Good to see you in here, man. Yeah, Rebecca Chin says, wow. Fuck yeah, wow. This wushu was amazing, like, so aggressive, like, aggressive, no holding back. Oh, God, it's so good. It's so good. Liu Haibo. If you don't know Liu Haibo, now you do. Um, go find videos of him. He was an amazing wushu athlete. I've actually been in the same room as Liu Haibo. I haven't talked to him, but I was in the same room. In 2002, when I was in China, I went to record video of a Chinese national competition, and across the room, on the other side of the arena, was Liu Haibo, and I shot some video. I'm like, that's Liu Haibo. I never met him, unfortunately. I wish I, wish I did. Oh, God, we are running out of time here. It's already 9.50. Oh my God, what am I doing here? I want to set up this video. Um, what are we doing here? Okay. This might be the last video we're going to watch. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you want me to keep going, I'll keep going. I have a few more videos that I wanted to share. So this is, uh, when did I buy this video? I think this is when I was in China in 2004. And there was a Wushu store that had a bunch of VCDs. And I bought these VCDs. Maybe it was 2002. I don't remember. 2002, 2004. And all it said on the cover in Chinese was like, best of Jian Shu. So what we're going to watch is my edited version of the best of Jian Shu video. And this is some of the sickest Jian Shu of all time. Brian Hutchinson is in the chat. Alan Peng says, let's keep it going. Rebecca says, 100% stick around if I keep going. Okay, maybe we will. I've got half a glass of red wine left, so we'll see. Okay, so most of this is from competitions. I would say it's probably around 1989 to 1991. Also, I think these are golden years for Wushu. And I specifically love the straight sword of this competition. This, just, I, specifically this competition. Daniel Liu is mentioning Wushu One Family. I used to know the guys who did Wushu One Family. Wushu One Family was led by this guy, Ray Bramwell from the UK. And I met Ray in China when I was there. Super nice guy. I wonder what happened to Ray. So this Jian Shu is just sick. Like the combinations they have, 
and the techniques that they're showing. So rich. And also, they just have crazy directional changes. Like, you're watching it and you almost can't tell what they're doing. Joe is asking for early beginnings of non Dao or non Gun. Shoot, Joe, you missed um, the last live stream that we did, and I was showing the 1999. World Championships, that was the first World Championships that had Nangun and Nandao. First time those events were included. Chris says, Furious G. Furious G was also a friend of mine. We used to actually work together at uh, uh, Design Reactor and Rotten Tomatoes back in 99, 2000. Yeah, Daniel Liu says, uh, these videos are proof that you don't need non-do for amazing competition. Yeah, look, they're not doing like crazy jumps. But when you see this, uh, Li Tianyuan, you know, Coach Li, Li Tianyuan uh, is in America, has a school in Seattle, Washington. Watch her. Straight sword. Sick. Sick. Like, you don't even have to do a jump kick into splits. You just jump into splits. So good. Oh, Chris, really? You said the Furious G was how you finally... Oh, getting on Furious G. Yeah. Remember, those websites were before YouTube. So, like, the only way to share Wushu videos online is, like, if you hosted an MPEG or hosted a QuickTime movie. We didn't have, like, social... Uh, video sharing. It's like you had to go to a website and like download the video and then watch it. Yes, Jerry. Li Tianyuan is, is fantastic. And yeah, Alan, still so good. She's amazing wushu athlete, great coach, all around nice person and has remained uh, highly skilled. I love the hair <laughs> for some of these women. That poofy hair in the in the front. Whack! Oh man, I love that. Like bam! And then like like that crazy, like almost like a shake to get out of it. God. Yeah, Sam. Back in the day, you could distinguish which province athletes came from. Yeah, each team would have their own flavor, their own feeling. You know, Jiangsu looked different than Beijing. And then you had like the Beijing team trade and like bring in all these athletes. You know, like a bunch of Beijing Wushu team members are not from Beijing. Like Lu Qinghua is not from Beijing. Um, Lu Qinghua is from the north. What's that city that has all the ice? Um, lots of top athletes were on the Beijing Wushu team were not from Beijing. Han Jing was traded. Um, yeah! Oh, that beginning! So sick. So just, it's just an empty stance, but like that pose? So sick. Oh, Chris, if you, you're right. It's Harbin, but it's not Harbin. I'm thinking about another city. Oh, a bunch of good athletes were from this place in the north. Fuyan was from there, and I think Wang Xiaona. Why am I forgetting? No, everyone's saying Harbin, and that is where they have the ice festival, but I'm totally thinking of a different place in the north. I'm so sorry. I'm totally blanking here. Yeah, Sam Trent. Han Jing. Han Jing, one of my all-time favorite wushu athletes. And a super nice person. I used to have a big crush on Han Jing. I was like, ah, oh, I could just like... Marry Han Jing, my life would be great. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Liaoning. That's right. Rafi in the chat. Liaoning. Liaoning produced many great wushu athletes. But then they like all got like... 
uh, traded to other to other cities. Liaoning is where all of them were from. Rafi in the chat, if you don't know, Rafi is a very important person in the history of Wushu on the internet. Rafi had the first Wushu website on the internet. In fact, I remember back in maybe like 96 when there were all these different search engines like Excite and uh, Ask Jeeves. If you went to one of those uh, search engines and put in Wushu, one of the search results would be like, do you mean Rafi? <laughs> Uh, yeah, BeijingWushuTeam.com, and then before BeijingWushuTeam.com, Rafi's website was hosted on uh, the Cal UC Berkeley uh, servers. Yeah, it was one of the only places you could find information on Wushu, and Rafi, to give him a lot of credit here, he hosted some of the very first Wushu videos. Now, granted, they were tiny videos. They were like AVIs, MPEGs, Windows Media Player, and they were like, 160 pixels, you know, wide. But uh, Rafi, props to him, man. A lot of people of that generation will, will know Rafi from his contributions online. Yeah, Sarah followed Rafi's site. Everybody did. Thanks for joining us, Rafi. Rafi's now in Asia. He's been over there for many years. But da da I love these. This is like from the intro. It's like a little montage of what to expect. Back then, some athletes would put talcum powder on their shoe. They would like pour talcum powder on their shoe so that when they went out and their first slap kick, you'd have this poof of, of, of smoke. I don't actually know if that's legal anymore, but I don't see why you couldn't do it. But Yuan Wenxing did it. You would put talcum powder on your shoe so that that first slap kick was like, pow! You're like, ho, oh, shit. Oh, man. I have so much feeling. I love Rafi says he's looking at his window in Shenzhen. Boom. Oh, man. Was that like a behind the back? Holy crap. You know, so I'm going to go on a, a little rant here, but what I hate, I'm sure I've said this multiple times before, but what I hate about Jian Shu today is that it's just like flower, 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 stab, flower, 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 stab. And when you watch Jian Shu of this era, there's so many different techniques. It's not just about a flower. One of my all time favorite videos of all time coming up right here. I love this straight sword. This is. Fantastic. I, this just has everything for me. Whew. Flavor, feeling, incredible directional changes. Speed, accuracy. Oh my God. Oh man. Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, Sam Trent, I, I think her name was... Zhang Xiaoyi, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. Multiple people in the chat are like, I remember this video. Yeah, because it's sick. I think it's Zhang Xiaoyi, I think. I could be totally wrong here. Look at that drop stance. Yeah, I think it was Zhang Xiaoyi. Look at just like so many different techniques of, like, you know, blocking, parrying, striking, cutting, on, moving on different planes. And it just was a cohesive form. It was so beautiful. So beautiful. Sorry for the video quality there. That was from um, converting this from a VCD to a uh, QuickTime. Yeah, Jamal. That's right. Zhang Xiaoyu. Zhang Xiaoyu. Look at this. Look at that. Let that body just like stab and then like 
Ugh. Feeling. So good. Ha. Oh. Yeah, man. Liu Qinghua. Holy crap, that drop stance. Liu Qinghua, the queen of the drop stance. Queen of the drop stance. God. I mean, do you guys agree, like, Jian Shu today just is, like, not as rich. It's just about, like, moving the sword fast and then making snapping sounds, to be honest. It just doesn't have, like, that rich choreography, that depth of technique, the tempo changes, directional changes. I just... Luch, Luciano, Casarino, from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Thank you for joining us. Man, we have a good group in here. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thank you. I mean, you know, I started these Wushu live streams not knowing who was going to show up. And this is so awesome that there's old schoolers, new schoolers, people from all over the world, from China, from Argentina, from the United States. Thank you for coming. This is awesome. So a little bit of the men's competition from that year. We've been watching a lot of women's competition, but let's give some props to the men as well. They were all so good. <laughs> I love in the chat, everyone's like, holy crap, Kevin's here. Oh my God, Rafi's here. This is like a, a you know, a, com a real global community of Wushu folks. So I believe this is Shang Yu from the Beijing Wushu team. Shang Yu, I think, is a very underrated Wushu athlete. He was never, like, number one, and I think that's why he doesn't get a lot of attention. But I think he was so outstanding, such a, a, a great athlete, not only in his intensity and his ferocity, but also in his technique. He had great choreography, a fantastic Wushu athlete. He, just, he was just never champion. So, Sam Tran says, where's Jia Ping? Don't worry, man. I got some Jia Ping. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, man. Kevin Liu. Baby Kevin in the chat. Where's Kevin Morris? Somebody call up Kevin Morris and get him in this chat. Yeah, Rafi, it, it is Shang Yu, right? I'm pretty sure it is. So I think Shang Yu is in Singapore now, and I think he's teaching Wushu. Yeah, love this Wushu. Okay. You know who he is. Jiang Banjun. And I believe this is before he was traded to the Beijing Wushu team. Watch this form. You know, such a technician. A technical Wushu athlete. Xiangbang juice, yes, Tiffany, you know that story. Look at oh, look at that, <laughs> look at that flavor. It's like hit it and then uh, feel it. Such a good form, such a good performance. Drop stance, drop stance. Yeah, Jamal. I, I, Jamal's saying like he had more flavor here. I think actually when Jiang Manjun gets traded to the Beijing Wush team, he becomes cleaner and more like technically correct. But I think he did lose some of the flavor from this era. This, this was like so much more feeling. Okay, I think I'm gonna ch I'm gonna stop this video because this goes into drunken sword and. I, li I like Drunken Sword, but we don't have to watch that. 
Um, I want to switch it up. We're, let's go keep going. It's 10.06. We've been doing this for a little bit over an hour. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Um, okay. We can go for like another 15 minutes, I think. Let's, uh, da, da, da. what are we watching here? Okay, here we go. Here we go, because people requested it. Dun, dun, dun. There was a whole series of these videos that were on YouTube, and it's like a tribute to, um, which I thought were really, really cool. Alan Pang says, after this stream, he's going to go practice drop stands. Alan, go back and watch these videos of, like, Lu Qinghua, Jiang Wenjun. Those drop stances, like, you're on the floor. Okay, so this is the man Jia Ping. Known for his straight sword, also had an incredible spear. Uh, I am not a big fan of Jia Ping's Changshan, but his weapons were second to none. Second to none. Kristoff says he's sitting in his car outside a sushi restaurant watching this. Kristoff, go home, man. I mean, I guess Christoph is in Texas, like, there's very few restrictions, but I'm like, come on, man. Don't be sitting in a parking lot. Watch this straight sword form. Everybody knows this straight sword form. Everybody knows this choreography. You know this opening. You know that. Boom. The pauses. The half run here. Jia Ping. Joe says he's going to dust off his staff. Joe, are you still practicing wushu? Joe Scarcella, you saw him in some of the videos I showed uh, previously on our live streams from the U.S. Team Trials. Joe Scarcella, fierce competitor, late 90s, early 2000s. From New York City and then switched coasts, came to California and continued practicing with us. Yeah, look at this form. Look at this form, man. body i also loved that like three-quarter sleeve and i don't know if it was like a full sleeve rolled up but i liked that those proportions for a wushu uh uniform kind of a, a slim fit but with that three-quarter sleeve i loved that i love that joe says he's getting back into it a little bit come on joe if i can do it you can do it come on Christoph says, Wushu people never leave, they just take breaks. I think that is true. You never, like, really retire. I think I've retired two or three times in my life, and I'm still here. Uh, so Jia Ping, that was his Changshan, I think, uh, or that was his Jianshu, I'm sorry. This is his Changshan. I, I think his Changshan is okay. I mean, obviously, it was amazing and awesome, but I think in this era, it was not my personal favorite. Obviously, look at him, he's killing it. I just don't like the stop. We're going to fast forward because I want to see his spear. Um, he is not normally recognized for his spear. But I think his spear is outstanding. But his straight sword was his signature form. Yeah, Jia Ping, Luciano in the chat says, Jia Ping is now a karate sensei. That's true. Very strange. I mean, I don't, I don't blame him because I think trying to make money and build a career out of wushu is very very difficult so i can understand if he chose karate as a more lucrative career i i really can't blame him but what look online find videos of jia ping doing karate and he has some wushu feeling in there it's, it doesn't look like straight karate it, it, it there's you can tell he did something else yeah, yeah. Jia Ping, one of the greatest wushu athletes of all time, is now a karate sensei. You know. Jason Tang in the chat. Thank you everybody for coming. Thirty people in in the uh, in the in the live stream right now. Thank you everybody for coming. This is awesome. Six spear, man. Six spear. Yeah. All right. So that is Jia Ping, one of the most legendary straight sword athletes of our modern time. Let's see. Okay. 
where are we? We are coming down to the end. I think, should this be the last video? Should this be the last? Do I want to end on this video? I don't know. I think, I think we can end on this video. We've been going at this for a little bit, about an hour and 10 minutes. Okay. So this is one of the early Wushu videos that I think I got by trading VHS tapes. And Rafi, I think I actually might have gotten um, this tape from you. This is the, or actually I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I'm wrong. The athlete that we're going to watch next, the first time I saw him was on a VHS tape that I think I might have copied from Rafi from the 1986 Chinese Nationals. This video is actually not from that, from that video but is the same performer of the similar era. So, we're going to end with a little bit of Southern Fist. And we're going to go with Yang Shiwen. Yang Shiwen, one of the greatest Nanshan athletes of all time. Here we go. Yang Shiwen made many instructional videos. If you if you find some Nanshan instructional videos from the 80s, it's him. God, man. Crazy flavor. Crazy intensity. Yes. Yes, man. Yes, the chat's blowing up from the Nanshan competitors. Yeah, man. Yang Shiwen was the man. And like the crazy eyes, those intense eyes. You felt his wushu. You, you were like, oh my God. Jesus, dude. So good. I mean, like this, this defined Nanshan, you know what I mean? It defined it. So good. So good. Man. Oh, I feel bad doing this, but I think I think that's going to be the last video of the evening. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Uh, this was super awesome to have this great mix of people in here. Uh, old friends, people that I used to train with, people from all over the world, um, different time zones, different continents. Um, I'm going to be trying to do these Wushu live streams about once a week, either on Sunday or Mondays. And I'll do some more where I share like my favorite videos. But uh, thanks for watching. I'm glad I could share these videos with you. Um, hopefully you saw some new things. Hopefully you were reminded of some old awesome things. Um, but yeah, this was really, really fun. I'm enjoying doing this. And uh, hope to see you on the next live stream next week. Thanks for coming, you guys. Have a great evening or the great rest of your day. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.